It's time for another unboxing and today we have the third of the free books launched at Zap Live in August 2024. So once again thanks to Fusion Retro Books. See at the moment. This is a signed copy as well. Move that out of the way and then open the pack because inside here is The Graft Gold Story in its slipcase. And there is the cover. The Pixar art by Mike Berry. So, for 15 years, the developer Graft Gold was synonymous with quality computer games, driven by the talents and commitment to excellence of its founder, Steve Turner, and number one employee, Andrew Braybrook. From its beginnings on the Desert Spectrum and Dragon 32 through to the chaotic console era of the 90s, Graph Gold was there, creating brilliant original software such as Avalon, Paradroid and Fire and Ice, mixed with professional conversion work such as Flying Shark and Rainbow Islands. This is Graph Gold's story, its ups and downs, its publisher woes and of course its games, each produced with a love for the medium that few other developers embraced. And you see there's some lovely art Shadow in the background there, which is a nice effect. So let's have a look inside. And of course, the first thing you can see there is Steve Turner and Andrew Braybrook. And at the event, I signed 300 copies of C61 Nightmares. Andrew and Stu signed over 400 copies of this book. And uh, Rob Hubbard signed over 700 copies of his book. So busy weekend for signing. Graph Gold Story, Acknowledgement, Steve Turner, Andrew Braybrook, Graham Mason for the memoir, some feature editorials, Steve Day, the designer, Ian Osborne, Faith Johnson, Mike Berry for the 3D Pix art, Oliver Frey, whose Crash Graph Gold inspired artwork used in this book, graced the covers of Crash and Zap, Roger M. Keane, who of course worked on previous fusion books, Gary Arnott for Retro Artwork Restorations and the Graph Gold Employees. So forward, the Graph Gold Story, the Timeline, Diary of a Power Droid, the Games, Clones, Conversions, Tributes and Knockoffs, the Memoirs, Unreleased Games and Afterword. So let's do with a forward. And then we go back to the past. And the earliest games. Grab Grubby's Day Out, Dragon Talk, Power Droid, Power Droid and Quasitron, From Dining Room to Garage, Last Starfighter based on Iridium, Quasitron became followed up by Megatron, New Employees there, Morpheus, which was ended up being delayed. Flying Shark, moving to Telecom Soft. Soldier of Fortune and Intensity. I do like Intensity a lot. Bushido, Where the Warrior. Realms on ST. Mobile Islands Paradroid 90. Into the 16 bit era with Fire and Ice. Envirocop. National Moto X. Beginning of the End. And then the timeline, Diary of a Paradroid, some of the highlights from the diary. And then the games themselves. So the Sadab Trilogy, 3D Space Wars, 3D Sadab Attack. And 3D Lunar Attack, which is one I played on the C64. Avalon, Crash Smash, Good Blue Stay Out, good fun. Dragon Talk, follow up to Avalon. Paradroid, absolute classic, one of my favourites of all time. Astro Clone, with Oliver Frey's cover artwork from issue 21 of Crash. 
Positron, Iridium, Reception on Trivia, Commodore 128 Enhancements, Phil Alley Cat, Ranarama, good fun, did enjoy that. That's an interesting design document, it's from Steve Turner there. Magnetron, sequel to Quasitron, Morpheus, which is a bit divisive, but uh, there we go. Rainbow Islands, Andrew still has the coin up they converted from. Flying Shark, good conversion on Spectrum and Amstrad CPC that Graph Gold handled. Flying Shark cover art from Crash. Shoot Away the Warrior, I did play this, and unfortunately I managed to save my game onto the game disc instead of the save disc and so that stopped working. Interesting game and some interesting ideas in there. Super Off-Road, Iron Van, Ivan Iron Man Stewart, convert from the coin up. Got uh, Crash Smash, good ratings from Zap. Power Droid 90, Andrew's own follow-up on the Amiga, Fire and Ice, Iridium 2, Empire Socket 94, Viracop, some box concept sketch, and then Andrew Raybrook on 40 years of Euridium clones. And then, then the later conversions of it himself, Euridium Advance. And the original advert artwork. And then the memoirs, Judy Turner, who was accounts administration alongside Steve, Gary Foreman, the coder, as uh, Orion on the racket. Uh, I played that on the Zap cover tape, quite enjoyed that. And Graham Boxall, producer. David O'Connor, coder. Jason Page, coder, musician, and audio specialist. Aaron Etio. Phil Williams, artist and designer. Rod Mack, coder. So he was involved in the later games. Stephen Rushbrook, artist. Again, 92, 94. Ian Wanton, coder. Norway, Coder and Management, Jose Duran, Last Soccer on the Movie 1200 there. And then John Kershaw, another artist from the later years, Gary Penn, a journalist, and some unreleased games, Battle of Britain on the PC, Power Drive 90, PC Engine, Wall Runner PlayStation, Total Recall Sega Mega Drive, on Cray Rally PlayStation. It was a rally demo that didn't get involved. And then concept art here for Dragon Wrath. Third game in the Avalon series. Empire Soccer for Super Nintendo and PC CD ROM. Fun Ice on Mega Drive at National Motor X for Amiga. Iridium 2, main battle tank using the Motor X engine. CD32 and AGA versions of Iridium 2 there, which sadly never reached. And then the afterword by Graham Mason, who has written and put the game at this project. So, another fascinating book from Fusion Retro Books. Looking back at Graph Gold, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Keep watching the channel for more unboxing, retro shelf, merch stand, and gameplay videos. Keep it retro. So having made the video about unboxing the Graph Gold story, I went online to see a message from my fellow writer, Paul Morrison, talking about the extra goodies. And I realised I had forgotten. These were still in the packaging and so were mine. So you see we've got this little drawstring bag inside. We have pin badges. So these are the extra perk, and as you can see, we've got the Commodore 64 Iridium Sprite, the Manta, 
and the Spectrum. And these were the extra little perk. Now you see you've got this lovely little drawstring bag to keep them in. And that was the extra perk on the campaign. And you may also have seen there was a recent Houston campaign through Pintopia for collectible pins as well. So that's just a little addendum to this video with the, with the new with the pins in and I hope you will keep watching the channel for more unboxing retro shelf merch stand and gameplay videos.